And we have such fabulous restaurants, especially burger joints here. How could you oh, do that? Sorry, that I went to Burlington? Yeah. I, I know, I, but sometimes I just, I'm always here. So sometimes I like to go out. So, but. Okay, we'll give you the free pass once. Thank you. Okay, thanks. <laughs> All right. Can I, tell, yeah. can I tell you about my morning? Yeah, for sure. Go ahead. I got to go on a salmon charter boat. Oh, nice. Okay. Did you know, did you know that we have a world-class sustainable salmon fishery right here in Lake Ontario in Port Credit? And we have all these local charters going out. I had no idea. I knew that Hazel was a fisherwoman. They're called anglers now. I learned that too. So they're anglers. And so we went out and uh, they showed me how wonderful it is to go out angling in Lake Ontario and catch salmon. Did you catch anything? I did not. But I wasn't out long enough because I okay. didn't have a lot of time. So it gave, just gave me a taste for it. But I think it'd be the great corporate group or you know, group of friends getting together. Let's go on a boat ride, catch some fish go out angling. Nice. I think it'd be a great event. So I did that. And then I went kayaking. Oh, yeah. where'd you go kayaking? Uh, in Port Credit Harbor. It'll get posted tomorrow. Okay. So we, uh, we had a choice, I had a choice of paddle boarding or kayaking, and I could do either. But I, we went out with CHCH that wanted to do a profile on Mississauga, and all the water okay. sports that are available and all the great things to do, like not only the shopping, and the, of course, the restaurants and the patios, and the fine dining in Mississauga, particularly in Port Credit, but all the all the water sports too. So that we had kayaking and, and the paddle boards and and then, of course, the canoeing. And I talked about the, the, the opportunity to go fishing that day. So a great morning. Nice. Uh, did your uh, F45 uh, work out with the back muscles with the kayaking? <laughs> it sure did. Um, yeah. So uh, I didn't go today. I was there yesterday. But that means I'm going tomorrow. Okay. Awesome. And yesterday was a, a really difficult class. Oh, was it? Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. You can't go <laughs> to that every day. Very... You can't Good go you every day. <laughs> well, you have to. You have to keep fit. And it's great stress reliever, too. And it's great for physical fitness, well-being, mental health, all of that. I recommend it highly. And there are side benefits, too, like lost some weight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why I thought it. Yeah. So to keep my mental focus. Um, okay, okay, let's the questions these are all questions most of these questions are from um from people that are uh, viewing so they're very well in the uh, what's going on in mississauga so let's That's start true. with the back to, back to school plan that came mm -hmm. out today from the ontario government uh what are your thoughts on that so i was in meetings this afternoon i need to get caught up after we spoke so tell me what's the highlights they're going to change the hvac system they're going to allow kids to go back in, in, in classroom learning i think the biggest thing is uh extracurricular activities are back uh no That's masking good. no masking outside right um and uh yeah so little things like that and uh like kind of blow instruments is that what it's called like um trumpets and stuff like that but You're the key here the is will will there be in classroom learning because i think that's so important for the kids oh, yeah. they need so, to be back in the classroom with their teachers with their friends i think that's so important and yeah. and yes there will be you know uh shared instruments that <laughs> won't be shared right yeah. <laughs> well, individual, the individual sports and, and music so, etc well let me let me ask you this then because uh, I know um will kill public health you know I know there's get, there's probably going to be a covid spike in the fall right uh will peel public health take the initiative to close down schools this time around like they did you know well, last so you know, we always said that the schools would be the last to close and the first to open. That's so important to us, right? We want to keep schools open and we know it's important to the to our children as well. And, you know, I, we're all waiting to hear whether or not they'll approve of a vaccine for children under 12. We don't know yeah. yet. There hasn't been any announcement, so we're waiting to hear. Uh, but of course, we want the kids to be safe. But should there be an outbreak, I think the same approach would be taken you know, it would be the classroom and then before it would be the school. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just as you saw at the camp that was uh, closed down this week at, uh, in Muskoka. In Muskoka, okay. Because mm -hmm. um, they, so, they had to stay by cohort, right? And they, each cohort group got shut down. So it would be the same approach, the classroom before the school. Okay. Uh, we talk, I asked you this last week. Uh, step three expires this week. Um, mm -hmm. 
Have you I don't heard see it? Yeah, no, up? I have heard nothing on it. Um, okay. I'll tell you our vax rates. I've got them here. It's uh, 82% first dose. Where are we? 81.3, almost 82%. Uh, have first dose, and that's 12 plus. So that's very good. Uh, 68% second dose, and that's 12 plus. The youth have really vaccinated. 74% are 12 to 17 year olds, uh, and uh, at least one dose, and 53% with second dose. And we know that they're out there getting vaccinated because they want to go back to school and they want to go out with their friends. Peel has received uh, and given two point, almost 2.3 million doses. Okay. which is just under 10% of the total provincial allocation, notwithstanding we're over 10% of the population. Did, did you say uh, 12 to 17 year olds are 74% double back or single? No, single, single, 53% double. That's just a little bit below uh, the uh, all, all eligible. So the numbers okay. for all el eligible, which is 12 plus are 81.3 and 68%, okay. 12 plus. Okay. But they're, but they're very eager and they're out there getting vaccinated. True. All right. And, and we all know, and we should reinforce it every time we speak and every time we meet, that this is now a pandemic of the unvaccinated. And so what we need is everyone to go out and get their shot. If you haven't had your first, you know, the best thing to do is to speak to your family doctor and ask the questions that you have and see what's appropriate for you. See what your doctor recommends or your local pharmacist. They're very well informed about all the vaccines and what might, might be appropriate for you. Speak to your family members and your friends if you have any reservations. You know, what did they feel like? Why did they do it? Why did they not do it? As we know, vast majority of people have done so. We need to get our numbers over 90%. And we're getting there. You know, we're getting there. So I'm very pleased about that. Mayor Kami, do you have any friends? I mean, I have a few friends that I've unfollowed that are anti-vaxxers, anti-maskers. and the all The same. You know. The yeah, same. So very, very few. They're friends of friends that I don't see. You know, I, you know we, we have a, everyone around us has been vaccinated. My family, my friends, my children's friends. Have you ever tried talking to have you ever tried talking oh, to yes. these? Okay, what are they saying? <laughs> like, I mean, they know everything. I, they're large. They're, yeah, that is the problem. They, they think, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Their biggest concern is that the vaccine was created too quickly and they don't trust it. That seems to be the biggest concern. And then there are people who generally uh, don't vaccinate anyways. Um, yeah. So I tell them, we talk about measles, mumps, rubella, chicken pox, shingles, polio. Everyone gets vaccinated for good reason. And then they say, oh, well, you know, there is a trust factor as well. It seemed to be produced very quickly. But, you know, billions of dollars went into the production of this uh, in many countries. Uh, and we now have the experience of many countries and some that became came uh, quite a bit before us. We all know that Israel uh, was well ahead of us in their vaccination program. And, you know, we got to watch uh, their example. Um, so we know that it is perfectly safe and we encourage everyone to go out and do so. And it'll become more and more important as different you know, organizations and businesses and airlines and countries ask whether you're vaccinated or not. And they may ask you because they'll want you to quarantine if you aren't. Um, and if you are, you may be exempt of quarantine, but they will be asking. So you will may have to show documentation, proof that you have been or haven't been. Cool. Uh, I need to ask you for your opinion, okay? Okay. okay your opinion. Now what I is staff your... get very nervous, right? <laughs> <laughs> what is your opinion on actually changing the name of Dundas? What is your opinion? Do you, are you for it, against it? I've been giving that a lot of thought. You know, I had this discussion with an individual last night, in fact. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was... He said if it causes any angst or consternation amongst anyone, then we should really consider it. And I said, yeah, but what about the cost? I mean, if it really was going to cost us in the same realm as Toronto, which was, I think, six to eight million dollars, you know, there's so much we need to do with that money considering our operational deficit. So you know, there is a lot to think about. You know, I, I, I did a little bit of research on Henry Dundas and I, you know, I know that he stopped the slave trade in Scotland and I know that he added the word gradually to Wilberforce's motion. And as politicians, we all understand how to get motions through and Wilberforce's motion wouldn't have passed at all if he hadn't added the word gradually, because that was a very lucrative industry at the time, notwithstanding unethical, but those are today's standards. We judge that we know it's unethical. Uh, and so he, did assist getting the motion through. So, 
the other point that uh, Mayor Tory makes is that there was no connection to the city of Toronto. Henry Dundas had never been to Canada, never been to, to Toronto. Uh, and so why uh, name real estate for him? So, but there's a lot to consider. I know they've moved forward in Toronto. We have yet to have that discussion in Mississauga. I think at this juncture, and I'll be consulting with my Black Caucus as well, um, and council will have this discussion at this juncture because I'm very concerned about our finances and our budget and our operational deficit plagues me dearly. It's what I lose sleep about every night when I lay down. Uh, I would say, you know, maybe we could overcome it by explaining, uh, you know, put up plaques to, under, to put it in historical context of who this person was and maybe not go forward. But, um, you know, I, I'm ready to have the de that debate. Uh, but certainly the financial costs are a big concern for me. Okay. So mm -hmm. more yes, more no. <laughs> <laughs> so, 70, so just letting you know, so we did a poll. 70% uh, of people uh, said they don't care. Oh, they don't care. <laughs> care to have the name change, right? So which, which was surprising to me. I thought... That uh, is surprising. That yeah, is surprising. So about, I, I must say the more people I speak to, um, most don't agree with changing it. But I don't yeah. know if that's just my age demographic. So, and that, you know, that's what I want to better understand. I, I want to understand where the Indigenous community thinks, what the Black community thinks, what yeah. everyone thinks about it. Um, you know, uh, and, <laughs> and then my counselors, you know, we have some serious budgeting issues. Is this where we want to be spending money? True. And then I so, always think uh, about the town of Dundas. What will the town of Dundas do? I mean, and, if I had to lean somewhere, it might be not but okay. if it's causing consternation and grief and angst to important groups in this in this city then of course we it's something we have to consider more closely yeah and there won't be any continuity either because if toronto changes it right and mississauga changes it oakville and burlington don't I've care said no well they, they even brought it up to them right, right? so they're like so i mean it's it's not an issue for them so it's going to be anyways so I guess we'll see what happens. <laughs> well, Dundas uh, runs the, through the length of uh, Oakville and Burlington as well, down to the town yeah. of Dundas. So, so, you know, and would we change it to, <laughs> this is a good debate to have. It's a, it's a very interesting topic. So, you know, would we change it to the same name Toronto does? But then it stops in Oakville. Right. But would we, would that have relevance for us? Or if we decide we're going to change the name, what would be relevant for Mississauga? Or would we ha just seek the same continuity as Toronto. You know, sure. right right now I'm hearing more so people don't want us to change that name. I, I was speaking yeah. with Hazel at a uh, Japanese consulate event last week and she says she wasn't in favor of it either. And I said, no, many of our counselors are very concerned about the costs. Uh, but, you know, I want to do some community consultation and see how people do feel. Uh, because if it gives anyone, not anyone, but if it gives considerable number of people angst, then you know, it's something to think about, but the budget, Hazel said no. Budget, Hazel said no? Hazel, yes. Okay. Right. Hazel said a big no. <laughs> a big no. All right. Cool. So, uh, I, and this is something we brought up to uh, vaccine passports, right? Um, yeah, so we just talked about that a little bit. You do have to show proof uh, more so whether you have been vaccinated or not. And it may require, it may mean that when you're traveling, you would be exempt of quarantine or not. So whether you call it a passport or you call it a, a, a record, an immunization record or, you know, a vaccine certificate, whatever it is, you will have to provide evidence whether or not you were vaccinated in many circumstances. For instance, going to Seneca College, you'll have to prove you were vaccinated to go back to in-class learning. Right. And certain travel to certain countries, you will need for, for even to come to Canada. If you're not have vaccinated, a, right, you're not even eligible. Or if you are, you're going into the quarantine hotel or you're going to you need a vaccine. You need a quarantine plan, which may involve going to wherever you're staying and staying put for 14 days. So you have really a asked. Pardon? How about a rec center uh, in Mississauga? Uh, nobody's asking there for a vaccine passport or double vaccination. No, we're not asking because that's indoors. You still have to mask. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. But it is a discussion the city manager is having with the leadership team on what we'll be doing at the city. You can't require vaccines. We understand that. But, you know, there may be an education component attached to that. And 
Okay. There still is masking required indoors. That has not changed. And I'm quite comfortable with that. You did see a spike in our numbers. We're back into you know, low double digits. But nonetheless, we were at two cases and now we're at 12. So they are going up. Um, as, you, as you know, we had an outbreak uh, at a camp. And what was the other? Oh, yeah, just amongst uh, community transmission as a result of travel. Uh, so that's why we were seeing the numbers increase. Um, okay. But, you know, we, we did expect a little bump after we had the, the larger reopening. Now that people can uh, you know, uh, participate in indoor activities and dine indoors, etc. We did expect there to be a bump, a little increase. Mm -hmm. uh, a few weeks ago, you mentioned uh, neighborhoods that had a lower kind of vaccination rate. Um, Correct. Yeah. How's, how's penetrating those areas? Right. So, you know, more and more we'll be closing down the mass vaccination uh, centers and probably by the end of August. So we'll be reducing the hours and the availability and then we'll be moving uh, to a more what we're calling targeted approach. And we know that Morningstar Public School and Ascension are Ascension High School in Malton are, are two pop-up clinics that are coming. Uh, Sheridan College Davis Campus Clinic as well. That's Brampton. I want to have a list. So the Embassy Grand uh, on Deer, on the Gore Road. Judith, okay, those a couple of them are in Brampton. Let me find Applewood Heights. Applewood Heights School. Our, My brother uh, went to that. Our August 14th, I didn't know you had a brother, 14th yeah. and 15th, Ascension of Our Lord Secondary, August 21st and 22nd. Um, what else? And of course, always at 10 Peel Center Drive. They can find all so this out will on be uh, online. So yes, yeah. so peelregion.ca forward slash COVID-19 vaccine, and there'll be a, a little drop down for pop-up clinics and other clinics that would be most convenient. And you can tell by the, uh, the list of the high schools for the pop-up back centers that I just gave you, which neighborhoods are being targeted as well. Okay, awesome. And are they going door to door at all? Like, like giving shots at the door? Is that? Uh, there, that, that may happen if yeah. we, you know, discover, yes, that's certainly a, like a, a, a rental building, apartment building, uh, where we know or where we are aware that the uh, vaccine rate is very low. I have know that to have been done in other areas and uh, in Toronto as well. Um, the one number I was just flagged to mention is that the, the R factor is, is creeping up. Um, you know, we were over one last week. And you know that when you're over one, for every person that has the virus, they're going to contaminate at least one other person. Right, so we don't. We want to keep that number under one, uh, or you risk community greater community transmission. Yeah, I think okay. that was the number. Sorry. Yeah, so that was a concern. We were we were all oh all of us are, and the positivity rates, positivity tests, Mississauga one point six. That's not too bad. Brampton's about the same. Uh, Caledon was slightly higher, but not too bad, and the reproductive rates. We're 1.3. See, but that number needs to be, you know, 0. 0.6, 0. 0.5, yeah. not one, not 1. 1.3. Uh, Brampton is 0. 0.98, which is de facto one as well. So, okay. let's hope everything is fine by New Year's Eve. So, <laughs> well, it's outdoors at least, right? Sure. Are you guys outdoors, planning on? Where, well, I'd like to. I like, you know, even if it means wearing your mask, being outdoors, wouldn't that be fun? We're all love to see live fireworks again and some live music. Yep. Yeah. So, um, Port Credit Library, the community appears to be in favor of the current site of the Port Credit Library, considering the structural problems that present uh, building. Right. So it's, a, it's you know that it, the engineering studies are ongoing and it is closed yeah. temporarily and and may stay closed. But if it's because we all know that uh, it you know it was built on a former town dump, and so yeah. the ground itself is unstable, and that's part of the reason that that's part of why it, what why the structural damage was caused. Um, so I don't know that that would be the safest place to rebuild it. Can you build it in the same park? Rebuild it. You know, that would be a wetland and a park. I don't know that we would. Okay. 
But there may so, be something else that could be done. I, you know, I don't want to speculate, quite frankly, because greater minds than mine will come up with some ideas. But we do own little par pockets of land uh, here and there and, you know, maybe closer to the arena. There, there will be other options. I don't want to speculate right now. Okay. Um, let's see here. What other questions? Oh, what are, you, what are some of the issues Mississauga Council is dealing with in the fall? Well, you know, December will be our budget issues, right? Uh, and so we're all really concerned about that. And, you know, there's a, a structural budget deficit because of the way the PILT formula was created. So, you know, we have to do that. So, but before that, even, we go into um, uh, AMO, Association of Municipalities of Ontario Conference, and we have the opportunity to meet with cabinet ministers and we do speed dating with them. They give us 15 minute allocation blocks uh, okay. where we can, you know, right. And we get to uh, talk about our issues. And, you know, for me, it'll, it, it'll be a number of, uh, I can, I can tell you what they're going to be. I have the list of them. Let me just tell you, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. keep talking and I'll tell you, I'll come up with the issues that came up. You, you keep on minutes. saying keep talking. I'm not sure what I can actually say. To keep so it will talking. be our financial, <laughs> it'll, you know, it'll be a general overview of our financial situation, right? Okay. And how the need for the continued restart program, because as you know, we can't, uh, it, we are not permitted to have an, an, a deficit, to operate a deficit. So we'll have to get some funding for that. Uh, we need safe restart transit funding as well, because our biggest deficit is in transit. Anyone who runs a large transit fleet uh, will be experiencing a deficit. Um, we'll be talking about, uh, well, we always do, uh, long-term sustainable funding for cities. Um, okay. So the, the, we, we call that the new deal, the new deal for cities. And then I said, we should always talk about our infrastructure priorities. And I think my two biggest are the downtown loop, uh, the downtown transit terminal, and of course, uh, the public marina, which we like to build, but we need so wait, to do that. That loop is back on the table? No. Okay. Well, those are our priorities, but we like to okay. communicate that. <laughs> so you're fighting for that loop again? Always have been, haven't stopped. We didn't okay. throw in the towel when they said we couldn't have it. We said, ah, maybe by four years, uh, we'll figure out a way to get it, get some funding federally, provincially. Okay. We're hopeful. <laughs> We're hopeful. And then the Marina, of course. And then, you know, BRTs along. Uh, Dundas hasn't been announced yet. We're waiting for that. The Lakeshore BRT was announced. So, you know, it's the, the infrastructure priorities, the financial situation, uh, the safe restart money, help us with the transit because we're running huge deficits on transit. I, I've said this to you for about a year now. It costs us twice as much to run, to transport half as many people. <laughs> yeah. And we're still at 40 to 50% uh, of capacity on the on the transit system right on my way can i go back to that loop because that loop is a uh, obviously a very big deal obviously for uh, probably a hundred thousand people right for sure it is for me as well we're having 20 50, 25 towers in the next five years yeah 55 towers in the next 30 right because there's another 35 towers coming in 30 to 35 towers coming in after that if in have they done any structural work to not put it in? Like, has yeah, any work? I, so I believe, I believe it was all uh, cost consideration, right? Yeah, yeah. Because when we received the funding to do the LRT back when the first year when I was elected mayor, 2014, um, you know, it is now 2021, that was seven years ago and costs have escalated. So the money we were originally um, granted has, you know, tripled the costs yeah. of the running of building the LRT have really escalated. Do, do you know if any work has been done at the city center in regards to any of the LRT stuff, or has it been more kind of like port credit? So, and, no, uh, so, so yes, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. There is because we're building a, a large kind of overpass that, that where the um, right at the base of the 403 that meets here, Ontario, I actually toured that site and saw what the plans were. Yeah. Uh, it'll loop. It'll it'll be an elevated loop. In fact, um, so okay. there's work being done there, and there's lots of work being done in Port Credit, as you saw at the Go Train Terminal, and slightly north of that, there is some land being um, expropriated, taken to expand the road there, and everyone's aware of that. And traffic's a little bit snarled there right now, but it, it'll improve. It'll improve. It's going to be exciting in the next ten it's years. Very very exciting. So many changes. Mississauga is really growing up. Yeah, I think I think it's going to be like the third biggest city by the time it's done in Canada. So, oh, thanks.
isn't it like one point, it's going to be 1.1 in like 20, 30 years, yeah. which would make it number three. So well, anyway. Well, they, some of those cities will grow, maybe not at our rate. Yeah, I don't and think much. And, and, <laughs> and we embrace the growth, right? And we do embrace the growth. So, and it's a great place to live, work and invest. And investment has found its way to Mississauga, as we see all over the, all over the city the development that's occurring, whether on reclaimed land at the waterfront, in the downtown, on the ninth line, so much is changing. And we, you know, it started with a lot of infill development, right, particularly in the older po pockets of the city. Uh, but Toronto's a very expensive real estate. So the next step is to come to Mississauga and build and we're very proud of that. And uh, we always make great good decisions with community consultation. We ask the residents, you know, what they want to see in those sites and we work with them closely to all the, with all the resident groups. And that's the only way to do it going forward because it's their homes. So they should True. have a right. They should have their say. Um, here's a fun question. If you had a dream concert at Celebration Square mm -hmm. or the Living Arts Center, Ooh. what would the main dream concert be? Well, you know, like, so, okay. Can you can you qualify that and say any band other than a Mississauga band? Because of course I'm going to say you know Triumph or Tom Barlow and his group. <laughs> if I had a dream like, outside of Canada, I'd rather just answer of what you would like to see because well, I, know, I did. Have, wouldn't it be incredible to have you too or the Rolling Stones come back? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but if you say, you know, Mississauga bands, you know who I adore. I would triumph if they could reunite and come and play. And we're, Tom Barlow is a big favorite down here in Port Credit. And he can attract a big crowd. He's so talented. Nice. But if you're going to pick it, be you two Rolling Stones type deal. Maybe. I mean, like in Canada Day, I think 150, they had they had you two there. Right. right. They have nothing in Canada. So anyways. Right. Coldplay yeah. I like too. Chainsmokers. All right. I hope uh, the people at Celebration Square are listening. One so. Republic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I have very eclectic tastes. I like Edith Piaf music, too. I mean, very eclectic. Um, here's a couple. Is there any plans for a bicycle sharing program in Mississauga's downtown core? Yeah, so we look at that a lot. And right now we're actually evaluating the scooter program. So you know that you saw me riding on Scooty. Yeah. It looks like a lot of fun. And we think that that mile may solve a lot of the first mile, last mile issues. Um, and there were a lot of fun. I mean, I got on that scooter and I just didn't want to get off. I was touring around the block and then around the square. And That's like, <laughs> Mir, we have to get going now. I'm like, we're having fun here. Anyway, so that was a lot of fun. And then the bike sharing program as well. Um, so all of those are being considered, of course. Awesome. Uh, will we see more community events soon? I think so. I yeah. think so. Uh, they're starting. I mean, I can see in my schedule there are uh, more events to attend in person rather than join online. I mean, I still attend events, but I just do them by WebEx, Zoom, Teams, whatever those, whatever the program is. We still we attend them all online. And the odd time I send in greetings, tape greetings and send them. But there have been some. I did a couple of seniors events recently, attended in person. And of course, we're in the community center. Everyone's masked. And it, it was safe. People were distanced. And it was nice. But it's starting to pick up with uh, community meetings and groups get gathering. Mm -hmm. Last question. What is your favorite summer activity in Mississauga? Ooh. Ooh. Uh, you know, I love being outdoors. You know, all winter I was hiking. I love working out. So I've been spending time in the gym as well. Um, I enjoy the kayaking this morning, uh, bike riding, uh, you know, paddle boarding. There's so much to do in Mississauga, right? Uh, what other activities do we have? A whole list of them here. Uh, ba -ba. Golf. Golf, yeah golf we have some great golf courses I, yeah. I have had the chance to play lakeview and i played brayband previously but lakeview this summer i played and it was a great course i don't want to tell people that because then everyone rushes out and books books it up and then can't get a tee off time but golf <laughs> i i learned that golf is fun oh. and it, you really have to concentrate sure <laughs> well mayor combi thank you so much just like that it's half an hour and it goes uh, by I just... so quickly doesn't it it does. Uh, great conversations. Um, and I guess I'll see you in two weeks now. I won't see you next week. So yes. Yes. All right. I get to take a few days off at a cottage myself. I, my family and I rent to the cottage. So awesome. Enjoy. I'll see you in two weeks. Thank you. See you later. Bye bye.